Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and the Unreal Engine keynote at GDC 2019 just wrapped up and just like I did with Unity and Google, I am going to do a condensed developer focused version of what happened in that keynote. This one's probably going to be the shortest of them all. It wasn't really that long of a keynote and there weren't that many surprises in there. So without further ado, let us jump in. If you're interested in checking out the Unity or Google condensed keynotes, check out for a link down below. All right, so what started? Well, we came out with Tim Sweeney came out on stage, Tim Sweeney being the founder of Epic Games. I uh, talked about how um, they're going to bring the Fortnite powered friends services, online services together for all developers on all stores, on all platform, um, including the Epic's friends system. And they've also announced partnerships with companies such as Ubisoft. So you can tie in your Uplay account into your Fortnite account and developers can access that and have a universalized friends system. Basically, it looks like they're trying to be the one source for friends list with this. So there's going to be a little bit more about online services in a second. Um, next up, and this one's pretty big. Now, Unreal has been doing developer grants for the last little while. They just finished a batch of $5 million worth of grants. And those are grants, no strings attached. Here's some money, build some great stuff using Unreal Engine. Well, they just announced a new version of it, five years long, called Epic Mega Grants. Game developers, enterprise, film, education, academia, open source. If you're in any of those, you can apply to Epic Games to get money. And how much money? $100 million. Yes, Fortnite is doing well, folks. They say no strings attached. This is just trying to foster an ecosystem there. Um, next up, their director of platform came up on stage, mentioned how there's 250 million players uh, on their services, basically Fortnite driving that one. Uh, Cross-platform features. They talked about how Epic Games online services are free. Uh, this is uh, like web services for backends for your game. Uh, completely free, no catch, they say. So if you're uh, building Building a friends list to be all uh, be all end all universal open friends list completely free using their network the same network behind Fortnite. Now, if you trust them or not is a different story, but like on the surface, there are no caveats. There's no asterisks here. They're basically just making this stuff available for everybody. That includes things like player inventory, purchases, uh, player identity and friends list, uh, player data storage, achievements and le leaderboards, matchmaking, and then voice comps. So these are <laughs> actually... That's a lot of people's current industry right here. This is like what that company does for a living. And if... Um, you know, Unreal is going to be giving away and hosting and eating the cost of that for everybody, regardless to what game engine or platform you're running on. That's going to hurt a few people's business models right now. Now, if you're interested in checking out more, um, go to dev.epicgames.com forward slash services. The SDK and dev portal are now available. Uh, the SDK is now available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It is coming on PlayStation, iOS, Android, Switch, and Xbox in the near future. Uh, the, develop, the dev portal has tools for managing services, your data, downloading the SDK and so on. The first service is Game Analytics. It's a dashboard that shows you things like how many users you have online, your retention, and so on. They say the data is 100% your own and is confidential. Now, I don't know if that means it's end-to-end -end encrypted and they can't see it, uh, but basically they're saying they don't own it. It's your data and you get to use it and this is all free. Now, the next part was actually kind of impressive in that whole mundane kind of thing that they're providing for game developers is a ticketing system. They're basically giving people a help desk so you can support users basically with this they log in submit ticket to respond to tickets and basically give support kind of an impressive thing there now next up uh their cto came gave the um, came to the stage and did a bit of uh here's the great rendering stuff that unreal engine already does we're focusing on what's new in this video so i'm going to really brush over this uh they did a preview of quixel's video made by three developers called rebirth using unreal engine 4.2 sorry, 4.21, made by three artists. Then they talked to Three Lateral, a company that they reaches, um, recently purchased that specialized in high-end digital humans. They've collaborated with these people for the last five years to create digital uh, humans for presentations, etc., including that uh, woman AI that they talked to last year. And then they went on to say that uh, Three Lateral technology is being integrated into Unreal Engine and that their services team is growing, but then they didn't give any details about what that new functionality is. So, yeah, okay. Um, they talked a little bit about uh, real-time ray tracing. Um, uh, they did a demo with... Uh, Deep Forest Films and Goodbye Kansas. Uh, they kind of showed this clip. At first, to be honest, it really wasn't that impressive to me. Uh, it was based on the book Troll. Uh, 
maybe I just don't have any attachment to the IP. But then they actually came out and showed um, Nick uh, Penwarden of the UE team came out and showcased the actual camera systems in real time and what they can do and how um, the actual performance was done on an RTX 1080 Ti card. And that part got a little bit more impressive. You could just basically a bit of a showcase of what Unreal Engine 4 is capable of in the real time space. Uh, but nothing real, sorry, that was a, a 2080, not a 1080. A little misleading there. Um, then they talked about the new differences in 4.22, which you can download now. Uh, relative to 4.21, it's got 30% faster compile times, 350% uh, faster incremental builds, live coding using uh, what was it called? Live plus uh, plus, which is basically hot reload for C plus plus developers. You can actually uh, run your game and change code on the back end and see the effects on the fly. Uh, scalable content tools for cross platform support, um, including LOD meshes automatically generating meshes for different platforms. Um, and high performance real time rendering architecture rewrite. This is the real time ray tracing aspects of the engine that have been updated to work in 4.22. So, real time ray tracing is basically there in Unreal as of the last release. Uh, then they got into um, AR or augmented reality. Uh, they said that there is this new Mika digital person uh, that you can actually interact with, interact with. It's created using Magic Leap and Unreal Engine. If you're there at GDC, you can go to the UE booth and basically talk to this digital person Mika um, through Unreal Engine technology. Uh, OpenXR support was announced. I actually did a video about that a couple of days ago. Um, streaming AR content to the HoloLens is also supported now on Windows device, from Windows devices, that is. Um, the full release for 4.22 is coming next week, and the full details were also shown there. Uh, but that is actually already out in the wild, so the, the final version is coming next week, though. Um, then they came on to showcase some of the developer um, that are having success with Unreal Engine 4. And then a lot of fans were waiting for this per particular part is Tai Yasui uh, from Kingdom Hearts 3 development came on. Uh, no real details other than to praise what um, you know their experience with Unreal Engine was. And the cool thing is they actually do a bit of a behind the scenes showcase of you know their development and usage of uh, Unreal Engine for Kingdom Hearts. That was kind of an interesting thing to see even though maybe nothing new was learned there. Um, then Netmarble came out. Uh, they created Lineage 2 Revolution. Uh, it's made a billion dollars worldwide. And then they announced that uh, they have a new one, Blade and Soul, coming out. Showed a video of it. Frankly, I don't know. It, it, it happened. Um, then the Bearded Ladies came out, talked about uh, Mutant Road to Eden. Uh, created with two developers, originally started in Unity, but they switched to Unreal Engine because of the lack of source code access. And then they announced that on June 25th, there's going to be a Switch version. Uh, an expansion DLC and a retail box copy for all platforms coming all at the same time. Um, and they got into details about the Epic Games Store. This one's pretty disruptive in the industry, so this is pretty big news, even though it doesn't really affect developers. There's more publisher stuff here. Uh, but they said that there are 85 million users on the store right now in 88-12 split. And they talked about how they are growing it using a free game every two weeks, plus Fortnite, plus major exclusives as their um, you know magic formula. And then they kind of contradicted themselves, in my humble opinion. They showed that their first free game was Subnautica, which had $4.5 million, dollars, uh, four, four, sorry, 4.5 million downloads. And then they went on to say that the most recent version, Slime Rancher, is coming up on that 4.5 million downloads. And they said, as, so as you can see, the store is growing. Um, actually, that, that, that stat just kind of shows that the store is pretty stagnant, that your newest free game has the exact same audience as your first free game. Doesn't that just mean you've, you're just talking to the Fortnite audience still? Now, don't get me wrong. I do think that the Epic Game Store is going to grow. It has a future. It is already showing some success. But that stat was a really strange one to highlight how it was successful at growing. But uh, next up, they had Metro Exodus. Uh, said it sold two and a half times the previous titles on other stores. And the... Um, Epic Game announcements included uh, that more Ubisoft titles were coming after The Division 2. The announcements are going to be coming from Ubisoft. And then they showcased a number of titles that are going to be at least first exclusives to um, the store with a montage video showing them, including The Outer Worlds from Obsidian, Dauntless, Spellbreak, The Cycle. Um, and then they finally announced that all the PC titles from, oh, I forget the name of the company, but basically Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and Detroit Coming Human are all going to be first copies on PC ever are coming to the Epic Game Store. And then finally, they announced uh, a bundle 
a Humble Bundle partnership where Humble Bundle can sell same, sell games or something on the um, the store. They weren't really specific about what the details were, but there seems to be some kind of a partnership between Humble Bundle store and the Epic Game Store. And the whole theory was that the Epic Game Store is very open and inclusive. And then they got into probably the first new major feature that nobody knew about, which was physics in Unreal Engine 4. New physics called Chaos. Uh, and then they gave a the destructive video. It was actually really kind of cool. It showed these guy chasing down robots in a town, basically blowing up the town. Um, but they really kind of showed no, none of the details of what physics was. Uh, and they, they did say that they were growing a team for doing physics and that physics are coming in 4.23. And then a bit of a slide showing what is part of that physics, but that was kind of it. So realistically, that was the only new major feature of Unreal Engine announcement here. But this is sort of the downside again. It kind of had this going on with Unity too. We don't get a lot of new announcements because we're getting open betas and, and preview releases and so on. So it's kind of hard for them to you know say, oh, and we added support for blah, when you know the entire development is pretty much done in the open. And in the case of Unreal Engine, its source code is out there. So you know you can't do a lot of surprises that way. But that was about it. And then uh, Tim Sweeney came back, basically said, yeah, that was it, and we've got free beer at our booth, which kind of makes me wish I was there. I like free beer. But that was kind of the extent of the entire thing. I lied. It took more than 10 minutes. In fact, it was 11 minutes and 20 seconds. But that was their thing in a nutshell. Anything stood out to you? For the most part, the last of announcements was kind of yeah it, actually the funny thing about this entire presentation is that demonstration that physics demonstration that guy was actually controlling it using either rift or vive controllers but not a vr headset and i'm like wait a minute why isn't that a thing because that is awesome i would love to just control my games using controllers on my tv but that's got nothing to do with this presentation anything there that stood out to you anything really impressed you and you kind of disappointed in it let me know comments down below and i will talk to you all later Goodbye. Goodbye.